What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob and today we're going to be doing you guys a little bit of a favor. Now, here on the channel we talk about sport bikes, adventure bikes, dual sports, sport touring, so many different niche subcategories of motorcycles that you as a beginner rider might not know which bike is right for you. Well lucky for you, we've got a bunch of different styles here in the shop and today we're going to be breaking down each style of motorcycle and seeing which one is going to be right for you depending on what kind of riding you want to do. Stick around. Today's video is supported by our brand new store, YN Moto. If you guys saw our announcement a few weeks ago, we have launched our own store and we are taking orders for parts, for gear, for tires. We've got stuff like this S2100 helmet, these Asin gloves, and then also these pretty awesome boots you can get as well. Remember, every dollar you spend on the store is an entry to win our giveaway bikes featured in today's video. Make sure you check it out. We're kicking things off today with sport bikes, possibly my favorite category of motorcycle. Sport bikes are your plasticky, flashy, fast, cool bikes, your crotch rockets as your mom would like to call them. And they're probably the most well-known style of motorcycles, but in reality, there's actually a lot of differences between these types of models. Let's start out with this baby Jixer over here and get into it. Now, if you're a beginner rider and you want to get a sport bike, well, fear not. There are many fully fared sport bike options out there for you that are appropriate for your skill level. We're talking stuff like the Ninja 400, the Yamaha R3, or even this Jixer 250 over here. Now, these bikes are quite different than their all-out kind of race bike with headlights counterparts, and the fact that they are much more comfortable to ride, make a little bit less power, and are just easier overall to handle as a beginner rider. These bikes make a great option for someone as well who wants a daily commuter kind of bike too, not something too powerful, sips fuel, and is overall pretty easy and cheap to maintain. But let's look at the bike you'd want to step up to after you've spent about a year on the saddle on one of these things. Now, if you still want the look of a fully fared sport bike, but you don't want to go all out and get a 600 or a 1000, there's plenty of fully fared motorcycles you can buy that are still going to provide you a cool sport bike experience. Something like this RS660 here actually has pretty relaxed ergonomics when you ride it around town. You can jump on this thing, spend a whole day in the saddle, and still come back, park it in your garage, take a look back, and see a cool looking sport bike. Other bikes like the Ducati Super Sport 950, the Honda VFR, those kinds of motorcycles fall under this kind of sport touring, sport bike style thing that can allow you to have fun with your motorcycle, but is not going to be super punishing to ride on the daily. This motorcycle makes a lot of sense for someone who wants their second bike, they still want the fully fared look, it's going to come with a lot more technology, a little bit higher price point, and we think it makes a great option for an everyday sport bike experience. However, let's take a look at the ultimate version of a sport bike. Now the ultimate culmination of sport bike, in my humble opinion, is the out and out race bike. This motorcycle started life as a bone stock Daytona 675R, which is already a pretty committed sport bike riding experience. And then I've gone the full masochistic route of turning it into a true race bike that I compete in CMRA with. Now, for those of you at home who are thinking you want the ultimate sport bike riding experience, you don't even care about riding on the street anymore, a track day or a race bike like this is going to be your best bet. But note, this bike is not for the faint of heart. It's got a plus two, minus one sprocket setup, a quick turn throttle, and a direct line RCS19 brake setup. So these bikes over here, when they're fully set up and race prepped, are serious, serious machines. And again, these are for the guy or girl who wants something that is ultimately committed to the fine art of riding a sport bike. But now, let's take a look at the polar opposite end of the spectrum, cruiser motorcycles. So now that we've satisfied all those sport bike boys who like to crumple themselves up like a gargoyle and hang off their bikes like spider monkeys, we have motorcycles for normal people. These are cruiser bikes. They are the perfect blend of comfort and style for a daily ride. You can ride one of these in a twisty road. You can ride it on a highway. You can ride it basically anywhere but a racetrack. You, you can do it, but everyone will look at you a little funny. So if you want to get started on a cruiser motorcycle, there are a ton of options and nothing is better than this Rebel 1100 right here. So the Rebel 1100 here occupies the beginner or lightweight cruiser marketplace. It's kind of weird to think of a motorcycle that is heavier than any other sport bike on the road as a lightweight motorcycle. But when you're talking bikes in the order of 500, 600, 7, 8, 1,000 pounds, this is the lighter end of the scale. This is something that basically anybody can sit on and feel comfortable thanks to a nice low seat height. So even if you're a real short rider, 
you can flat foot this thing no problem. This has a parallel twin, which is a little bit different than its V-twin counterparts. Normally those are big, air-cooled, lopy, potato-potato machines. This thing is a little bit more hopped up. It's a different, it's a spicy engine. But normally you're gonna get a V-twin that, you know, rumbles and rolls down the road. They normally go between 50 and 100 horsepower, which is a huge range for beginner motorcycles, but you have to think that those V-twins don't rev out nearly as far as something like a sport bike. It's all about torque in these motorcycles. If you like to just power out of a corner, this is the sort of motorcycle for you. But maybe you're not a beginner who's interested in starting on a cruiser. You're a dad and you have thousands and thousands of dollars to throw at a cruiser motorcycle. What could you get yourself? Well, you could get something like this bike right here. Uh, damn it. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> is it in frame? <laughs> oh. This is the BMW R18. This is your big daddy flagship cruiser motorcycle right here. This is for the guy or gal who wants to go out and crush huge miles doesn't want to muscle it down a twisty road because I am sweating just trying to move it into the shop here. This thing is a very heavy motorcycle and that is down to this huge engine. Cruisers like this often are north of 1800 cc's, putting down a ton of torque. They're not performance oriented motorcycles because you can't really turn with an engine this wide. But even your Harley Davidsons out there aren't meant for turning on a corner. They're just meant for cruising down the highway with the sound of free birds serenading you from your dashboard. This motorcycle is not for beginners. This is the kind of bike that you get as basically your finisher motorcycle. You have decided that cruisers are the way of life for you and you want the biggest and baddest thing out there, something shiny, something that's gonna show all your friends that yes, you do make a lot of money at the dentist office. Now, if you don't want a sport bike or a cruiser, believe it or not, they make a happy middle ground. Those are naked motorcycles. Let's check them out next. Now, if sport bikes are too hair on fire, but cruisers are a little too milk toast, we think the humble naked bike is probably your best bet. These are the most popular bikes we feature on the channel, and honestly, it's one of our class favorites too. You've owned a naked bike, I've owned a naked bike. They're pretty sweet, right, Spoy? Yeah, these things are awesome. They are a perfect blend between the style and power and comfort of all these other motorcycles blended into one platform that you can ride anywhere, street, track, basically anywhere you can put a motorcycle, you can put a naked bike. Also, if you're a little confused by the terminology, sometimes they're called standard bikes as well. You mm. see that from time to time. Standard bikes are what they call the old naked bikes. Now, they're just naked bikes yeah. because you gotta be confused. But if you want something to just go by as your first bike, I can clear the confusion up right here. Go get this one, Triumph Trident. Great Neo Retro motorcycle. A lot of Neo Retro bikes fall into this naked category. So if you wanna get yourself some cool, classic, old school aesthetic, naked bikes are the way to go. You've got your modern technology, modern engine, old school looks all blended into one. It's one of my favorite things about this platform. You can do anything with it, including go completely nuts if you wanted. That is very true. So all the way at the top of the totem pole over here is your Kawasaki ZH2, one of the absolute favorite motorcycles in the shop right now. Supercharged, 200 horsepower, absolute nutty motorcycle. But that's the cool thing about Nakeds is that no matter your experience or skill level, I can guarantee there's a Naked bike out there that's gonna be perfect for you. And as we mentioned, we both owned naked bikes. We really like them and they are the most popular bikes of the moment right now. There's lots of competition among a lot of naked bikes and you'd be pretty hard pressed to find one that won't fit your needs. However, let's say you don't want to stick strictly to the road. You want to maybe venture off into the woods or off road. Well, lucky for you, there's all kinds of motorcycles you can take off the beaten path. Let's take a look. Now, another favorite category of bike of ours, personally, are bikes that are capable of going off-road. If you've never ridden off-road, you owe it to yourself to get out in the dirt and see what it's like to jump a bike, slide a bike, and do all kinds of stuff with it. Now, when it comes to riding off-road, the number one consideration, in our opinion, is how heavy a motorcycle is. That's why we consider this Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled off-road capable, because while you can chuck it down some fun stuff and goof around with it, it's not gonna be an out-and-out amazing 
amazing bike off-road just because of how heavy it is. Weighs about 450 pounds, doesn't have super knobby aggressive tires or wheel combinations on it, and this bike is probably best reserved for forest trails and gravel roads and just doing cool slides. However, you look at something like the DRZ, conversation changes a little bit, right Spike? Yeah, so this is our stand-in for super moto and dual sport motorcycles. These are motorcycles that started their life out as a dirt bike, but were adapted with lights, turn signals, and all sorts of street necessities, so you could ride them to the trails and home in all one day. You don't have to worry about carting it in a truck out to the site where you can ride. This is the sort of motorcycle that is also measured in miles as opposed to hours. This motorcycle here is designed for street use, really. Yes, you can take it off-road if you have more aggressive tires like you have on your normal dual sports here, but they're really still street motorcycles through and through. They are a little bit too heavy to tackle the crazy gnarly stuff that you see off-road. However, with enough gumption, you could take one of these motorcycles anywhere. Yeah, as you guys have seen, we take our Jixxer 250 on some pretty ridiculous off-roading stuff, so don't let it discourage you. However, let's look at the complete extreme end of the spectrum here, a motorcycle that's not even street legal as is sold in the showroom floor, something like this KTM 250 SXF here. This is an out-and-out -out motocross bike. It's got five gears, a dinner plate size sprocket, probably a 50 mile per hour top speed, no headlight, no turn indicators, launch control, it weighs 230 pounds. It is a ridiculous riding experience, right, Spike? Yeah, and for all of that fun stuff, I mean, you WEP Apex suspension, all this performance, it is going to cost you a pretty penny as well. Yeah. This is a kind of motorcycle is more expensive than your dual sports because it is a competition machine. Mm -hmm. It's basically the race bike of the dual sport world, which makes sense why you've gone and picked one up. Yes, yeah, I, I enjoy going to the motocross track and whipping this thing around and doing cool jumps with it. It is a ton of fun to ride and is very, very capable. This little engine, despite being a 250, given its low weight and it makes like 42 horsepower out of a 250, mm -hmm. uh, it literally slaps with performance. It's a lot of fun to ride. But again, we think that this is best reserved for someone who is very serious about riding off-road. If you're looking at getting a competition style motorcycle like this, not DOT legal, you're gonna have to cart this thing around to places. You can't ride this thing on the road. I mean, some people do, but you really shouldn't. And uh, this again is reserved for an extreme kind of person, a Kyle type of person, let's say, who wants a bike that is this committed and ridiculous. It is worth noting though that you can get one of these dirt bikes that's not all zooted to the moon. You can get a normal sort of dual sport dirt, dirt bike that's not plated, it's really light, but it's not also crazy performance oriented where you have to do the heads every couple of service intervals. Mm -hmm. This kind of bike is really designed for bleeding edge performance off-road. You can get just yourself a normal little 125, 230, 250, whatever, and go have fun second hand. These are really cheap ways to get into dual sports if you want. There's a great way to get out on dirt and experience how to slide your motorcycle around. Mm -hmm. That's why we say that it's one of our favorite categories of bikes because as you guys saw probably in Spite's video where he was riding off-road, it is a lot of fun to ride these things. So definitely go and check out off-road capable motorcycles if that's what you're into. All right, guys, we hope you've enjoyed this look today at these different types of motorcycles. Normally in these videos, we like to pick a winner of the comparison, but today, there are no winners, right, Spite? No, all bikes are awesome. You gotta go out and ride all kinds of different motorcycles. I started out on cruisers, I got a naked bike, I got a sport bike, now I've got two super motos. I mean, motorcycling takes you to some strange places. Yeah, I started off as a diehard sport bike guy, but then I found out I really like riding off-road and doing jumps and silly things like that too. So it's a process. You can get your first bike, experiment with it, maybe get something else in the future as well. It's gonna take you several years to kind of whittle down what you actually want to do with motorcycling. So we hope you've enjoyed this look today of what motorcycles might be right for you. And as Spite said, go and ride as many as you possibly can, because I promise you, they're all pretty fun. Remember to check out the links below to YN Moto. It's a brand new store. Got a bunch of tires and parts and products on there as well. Get entered to win our giveaway bikes, which this is a giveaway bike and some of the other bikes featured today are as well. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yammy Noob. 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 Keep watching Yammy Noob.